um, uh, pre what the Predator prequel was recently announced, uh, and then we have um, we watched the first episode of Blade Runner Black Locus, and uh, well, Baker and I did. We have a we have Black a Lotus. Things. Yeah, Black Lotus. We have a few things to say about that. Uh, but the first thing on our list tonight is Ridley Scott said what? Our good, <laughs> our good friend Ridley Scott is uh, once again kind of stirring the pot. Uh, so Ridley Scott draws ire of Marvel fans after calling superhero films boring as shit. <laughs> um, so coming oh. off of the heels of Martin Scorsese, um, Ridley, <laughs> Ridley Scott's, uh, you know, being a little bit more frank, I think, than Scorsese was. <laughs> I wonder if he liked Eternals. I, I think that maybe is the reason why, because uh, Eternals <laughs> is like the first like Marvel movie that's like people actually don't like. So he's kind of taking the opportunity to ride down the heels of criticism and say, "Well, it's not just this one; they're all terrible." Right. Right. Uh, yeah, so he says. Uh, he says here, um, the best films are driven by the characters, and we'll come to superheroes after this if you want, because I'll crush it. I'll fucking crush it. They're fucking boring as shit. There's, um, their scripts are not any fucking good. They're superhero movies, so why don't the superheroes have better stories? Sorry, I got off the rail, but I mean, come on, they're mostly saved by special effects, and that's becoming boring for everyone who works with special effects, if you got the money. Damn, he was in a mood. <laughs> yeah, this is, like, I love... I love it when Ridley Scott just kind of goes on a big rant about yeah. things because he does this from time to time. Like there was like one he did for Blade Runner twenty forty nine that was just like nuts and you're like if you're just reading it, it's just like I, wow. <laughs> he wasn't a fan of Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh no, he's a producer of it. He was he was he was okay. going off about something else. Okay. Um, like, you know, but he was doing the whole, yeah, I'm a fucking, I'll kill it. I'm fucking kill it. You know, that, that whole thing. Early is, Sheen energy. Yeah. A little, little bit. Um, so unlike, um, so of course, something similar happened with um, Martin Scorsese a little while back. Um, and uh, Coppola too made comments on the superhero genre. But, uh, you know, oh, I, yeah. I, Martin Scorsese drew the ire of the internet, um, but, you know, he, his comments, I think, were pretty fair, even if you do like superhero movies. It's, yeah, he it's, just point out they're like a yeah, roller coaster. Ride. Yeah, like just, a yeah, fun... it's, yeah he, it's not really like a cinematic experience. It's more like an amusement park ride. And I'm like, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, but yeah. uh, but uh um, can you rethink your life or anything exactly um but i think what's really um uh what's really interesting about this uh, versus scorsese scorsese was never interested in doing like genre type movies um but ridley scott is and mm -hmm. I, and i think that's kind of why you know, I, I don't know if, the, if this is necessarily going to hurt Ridley Scott or anything, but, you know, he does work for Disney and Disney owns Alien. <laughs> and if he is serious about doing more Alien movies, he probably shouldn't be talking so much shit. But then again, when you're as big as Ridley Scott, I mean, yeah, you, he's, kind, he's you kind of earn it. And it's also old, so he's just like, I and I just don't give a fuck anymore. I'm going to tell him what it is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that it's always fun to hear a Ridley Scott rant. Um, I don't know if you guys I like have, that thing. yeah, I don't know if you guys have much else to say about that. Um, yeah, um, Scorsese would never have the chance to direct, or he would never want to take the opportunity to direct a movie that you know ha has any of the same people working on it who are making the big superhero movies now. Whereas sure. Ridley Scott. Um, yeah, is much more likely to want to direct a big blockbuster, mm -hmm. you know, with Disney behind it. So I think he is kind of hurting his future opportunities here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I can see that. Uh, see that happening. I don't know if, because it's, it was already questionable whether or not we were going to get Alien Covenant two, which I, I, you know, I kind of doubtful as we discussed last week but i don't think this is doing him any favors towards that 
Um, Xenomorph in the MCU. Um, well, you know. Don't give anybody any idea. Yeah, yeah okay. seriously. Yeah, seriously. You know, cut the cut his mic. Cut his mic. Um, um, but uh, now the uh, the other thing. Uh, so so this was really cool news for me. Um, we're getting a Predator prequel. Uh, right. And, and uh, Baker, <laughs> I, I told you the title already, but um, the pretty good. Yeah, it's. It, I love the the title of it. Uh, the movie's called Prey. Well, that's a good title. You know, it's really good, right? I mean, I mean, it's just it's kind of like uh, you know, Predator is such a very basic thing. It's playing with the dynamic of you know, hunter and hunted, and you know, who's gonna play the role of the predator? And of course, in the original film, you know, it it's. Switches from uh, from the alien creature to uh, Schwarzenegger, and mm-hmm. you know it, it's you know it's a, it's a basic storytelling thing. It goes back you know to the beginning of time, but now we're asking like about you know who's going to be the prey, and it sort of brings in a new question that's really more rooted in horror, uh, I think, than in. Um, you know, kind of a basic action. Um, right. And which, like you're saying, the original Predator is kind of like the first act is like the third act of an action movie, and then yeah. it becomes a horror movie. Yeah, I actually my my kind of take on it is like Predator and Aliens are both examples of like these late '80s commentaries on the action genre, which was of course prominent in the '80s. And, you know, kind of putting the would-be heroes that are supposed to be badass warriors into situations where they are very vulnerable. And, you know, they're, you know, we kind of see that they're not, they're not actually, you know, the people that, you know, we're looking up to. They're not the the badass action heroes. They're, they're people just like us and they are, um, you know capable of you know dying just as we are um yeah, about survival and just action and exactly and that's yeah. why it was always kind of weird to me that predator always kind of ends up being um you know sort of lumped in in that category of 80s action movies uh, like you know it's it's like the movie your dad rents at, at blockbuster <laughs> and uh-huh it's it's really like like you said it's the first act of it is you know an action movie but then it quickly turns into horror and then it turns into like this silent non-dialogue very primal you know uh you know standoff yeah standoff between the you know the two remaining uh figures in the story um but yeah, I'm curious what the prequel is going to do. Like, what angle is this going to be from? Well, it's it's set in indigenous times. And it's uh, oh. from director... Uh, well, yeah, so it's got an, an indigenous actress, uh, Amber Mid-Thunder, um, what I'm reading here. And uh, Summer 22 release date on Hulu. And it's... Uh, I believe it's it's directed by Dan Trachtenberg, who did a uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane, which I thought was right. excellent. I thought was excellent. Yeah, that was a, that was a really surprisingly good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah I was surprised by that as well. I I really liked it. Um, but we won't talk about Paradox though. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for bringing up Paradox, but <laughs> anyway. I was thinking it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh. But yeah, I, I think it's supposed to be like the first predator that came to Earth. Um, and it's like the first hunt, if that makes any sense. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, sure. Yeah. But it, yeah, sure what, what do you mean by indigenous times? You mean just. Oh, like I, 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 I meant like pre colonial. Oh, South wait, America? Uh, so? No, 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 no. America. Okay. Oh, it's. So I'm reading something here. That actually, it says it's going to be set in the 18th century. So this actually is uh, well okay. after colonial times. But um, it's going to focus on ba- basically what I'm saying is it's focusing on like Native American culture. Okay. 
And, you know, it okay. was the, now the, the project had an interesting history because it, Dan Trachtenberg, after the release of 10 Cloverfield Lane, um, you know, revealed that the next movie he was working on was called Skulls and nobody really knew ah. anything about it. Uh, and then it was, it's, it leaked at some point that actually Skulls was a Predator movie. And I got the spines. Yeah. And now we're but, at Prey. You know, it's the working title, of course. Uh, but yeah, I, again, I really love the title Prey. Uh, it's 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 so good and uh yeah i mean i have i'm much more optimistic about this one uh the uh the the last predator movie we got of course was uh was was pretty pretty lackluster and, uh, uh, shane black, did you get yeah. did you guys see that one the the predator shane black never saw I it yeah. yeah yeah i uh well i'll put it this way i um I walked out of the theater. I'm like, well, that's uh, that's being stricken from my head of canon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, too bad. Yeah, but um, I'm I'm much more optimistic about this one. I think this is going to be pretty good. And it's uh, a movie, right? Not a show. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie. It's coming to Hulu. Premiere on, yeah, it's going to premiere on oh. Hulu though. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, love pretty, that. Yeah, pretty cool. I can't wait to uh, see more of it and what they're doing. Um, now, uh, this is also something that, you know, uh, Baker and I checked out. Justin um, uh, didn't get a chance to see it, unfortunately. But uh, we watched the first episode of Blade Runner Black Lotus. And oh, um, um, I got a few things to say. Um, but Baker, do you, do, you, do oh. you have any notes or uh, commentary about it? I mean, like the general opinion, I thought the action was cool. I thought the lighting was great and the environments were cool. The characters were okay from a distance, but any kind of like close-up emotional stuff looked really weird to me. I don't know what video game they're reminding me of, but are, are you talking about the design and the animation? Yeah, and just the the, the expressiveness, I guess. Okay. Um, but I enjoyed it. I also just kind of find the anime, the amnesia. Um, uh, plot point to be kind of overdone and yeah later, but... well that was kind of my feeling about it um it's playing yeah. on a lot of tropes that we've already seen before in a million other movies um, yeah i really wasn't it, on... <laughs> when the plot is who is this character and what do they want it's yeah. hard to root for them you know but, yeah and yeah and i have similar qualms about like the animation style it's you know, I, I kind of want to see something a little bit more like um, Blade Runner Blackout, the kind of almost, it, which I, if I recall correctly, that was 2D animated. Uh, um, yeah, I'm sure they uh, did in computers, but. But, you know, with this one, it's, I'm not opposed to it being in 3D, but it feels very clean and Blade Runner is not supposed to feel clean. Yeah, it did feel, it was weird, because at the end they say, like, you can do it America or something on that blimp. And I was like, oh, yeah. This, and I was watching it in Japanese, too, the dub, but, I mean, the sub. Oh, but it still it felt, like, very, like, Neo-Tokyo, like, it didn't well, really, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the blimp, of course, was from the um, original Blade Runner, and I actually went to go see that in theaters. Uh, oh, yeah, it good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that was fun. But, um, the, so it was kind of, you know, comparing this to that, like one after the other, I mean, I, I feel like this is pretty underwhelming. Um, yeah, it felt like it was trying to do the best hits of like set design too, with like, there are the umbrellas and there's the little bar in the rain that everyone's sitting at. But none of it feels like lived in, like the original Blade Runner does. And none of it feels noisy. None of it feels uncomfortable. Like yeah, Blade Runner does. Polished very like yeah and i didn't realize i i was watching it with the japanese subs i didn't actually realize there was a there was an english uh dub option for it but one of the things that i i did want to comment on that with a little bit was like i, I kind of would have liked to and, you know and this criticism doesn't really hold up you know realizing that there was there was an english dub right I assumed, but I don't know for sure, to be honest. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't see the action. Right here. Um, oh, no, there. I guess there isn't. 
Oh, okay. Well, then this criticism does hold up. Um, I there kind of want to see a little bit more of the clash of cultures a little bit um, in, in Blade Runner because you know there's like the you know chinatown and whatnot um mm. I, I i guess what i'm saying is like i want to see a little bit more um uh, i guess diversity in the cultures because i think it could have made something really interesting if some people were speaking english and some people yeah. were speaking japanese and but mm -hmm. it, you know when it's all around like that it just feels really kind of dull you know i didn't think of that but yeah now that you say that totally yeah. Great. yeah um more of a melting pot feeling a little bit yeah and you know this kind of until we get to the one fight scene where it just turns unexpectedly violent i was almost <laughs> thinking that this was like this is like the pg-13 young adult version of blade runner yeah yeah and i'm like yeah i don't know yeah and that fight was cool but there were some like goofy parts in it too like, yeah yeah there's moments in it where we're doing the thing where you know the uh, we're getting you know a close-up on the main character when she's down and then she has to search her memories for inspiration to continue the fight and meanwhile all the bad guys are just standing there and it's like yeah. no if this was blade runner they would be kicking the shit out of her and the one dude had a gun pointed at her yeah for, no you know half the uh, second yeah. half of the fight yeah that's at the beginning so that's a testament to how long you know even one second in film uh can feel because it's like sure. he's hold he's holding that gun up at her uh, up at her throat it feels like forever it's like yeah does this motherfucker shoot right he was just trying to shoot her a second ago and yeah then he's got her, it, it doesn't standing there yeah it doesn't make any sense and, it's and then he just, does go to shoot her and she dodges it and then she, yeah, she she's a and, the, and then she she shoves like katana uh, yeah, it was into, his groin, into his dick like why and I'm, well, <laughs> well i mean nasty way to go but for sure but that's usually reserved for someone who's like you know they're well, abused or something they kill him that way it's like that guy well, tried yeah, to I mean, kill you but. i mean i don't think it necessarily has it does, to be it that have to. And, no, I'm, it's no, like, I, damn <laughs> i mean i i mean i don't uh I don't really have too much to say necessarily. I just thought that was notable that she uh, that she shoves the katana into uh, his groin area, and I'm like, oh, oh, well, that's a little bit different, and I wasn't expecting that. But I wanted a little bit. It, it, and to be honest, the, kind of what I'm getting at a little bit is it's it's the kind of brutality that uh, I wanted to see in the rest of it. Sure, it still just felt kind of like undeserved though like it was really hateful thing to do to someone to kill him that way and it's like i don't know if there's more history between the two characters somehow like she hated this guy sure but just I like mean, an afternoon I, chasing around yeah i mean i i'm just like whatever he i mean she killed him so it's it's just like i i my my thing is like i i wish the rest of the show show was uh was that bold i guess like, i can agree because, that. It because, it matter, because it doesn't because it doesn't matter because it doesn't really matter. what like if there was like the suicide squad the james gunn one where they're just shooting people in the dick for no reason and this the whole tone is like that mm -hmm. yeah but because that one well that was that was more just comical <laughs> right right <laughs> i i mean i don't know it's a, i i we're focusing way too much on dicks here guys i know this is the <laughs> alien happens. show but you know um <laughs> we'll get to the phallic aliens later yeah well we might get to the phallic aliens in a minute because i think uh justin has uh something that he wanted to uh, talk <laughs> about a little bit um wow, what a lead -in for justin yeah, well you know i mean it's a little bit freudian honestly uh uh, you, what what is what is the video that you showed me, Justin? When you describe it, yeah, uh, the video is called um, Ten Subliminal Tricks in Alien Isolation: A Game Analysis by Rob Ager. He's a YouTuber who um, he's got a channel called Collative Learning, where he puts out pretty much video essays. Um, he's most famous for his work about uh, Stanley Kubrick's films. Okay, but. Um, He's, he recently put out a video, this video about uh, alien isolation and just um, pointing to different instances throughout the game when there's uh, kind of, he refers to them as subliminal hints about the alien's presence or about the danger the mm -hmm. character is in. 
Yeah, there's like, uh, what is it? There's like just little like shapes, the shapes of things and uh, objects that appear in posters. And it's just kind of, I, I, I think it was actually pretty brilliant to point out that it does kind of keep you on edge a little bit and remind you of a present danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all throughout the production design of the game, there's little things like that. Like um, there's at one in the vents, there's often a bunch of tubes mm -hmm. kind of just lying around, you know, and they, yeah. you know, from a distance or with a quick look, they resemble the alien. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that you was uh, that was in um, Alien versus Predator Two back, I think, in like, two thousand and one. <laughs> How are uh, you the one to bring that up and not well, me? Well, well, I'm talking about the video game, which was oh, good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, in Alien versus Predator Two, the video game. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah, um, there was like a in the Marine campaign. There was a. Um, there was like a bit where like a pipe bursts and like it falls down from the ceiling and there's like a an electrical wire with it and just for a second it kind of looks like an alien and it's just the like tail. yeah it's like a really brilliant thing because even though the character doesn't necessarily know what's coming the audience is expecting it so just kind of playing with those expectations was mm -hmm. really really brilliant um and I, and I think that's kind of something similar here, um, you know, kind of pointing out some of this, uh, the stuff, uh, you know, that kind of resembles the alien or, but it's a lot more subtle than that. Like that was pretty, right, was that, that was pretty overt, but this is just more kind of gnawing at you psychologically. And it's, and I'm like, yeah, it's a good analysis of, of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just looking through this video, like the, these like engine cover things kind of look like the alien's head. Yep. You know, I never would have noticed that. Really, unless but you, but not, you didn't notice that, but your brain, brain did. did. Your brain exactly. did. Yeah, exactly. Fight Club. Um, <laughs> yeah, we actually, it does work too, because I feel hella tense playing Isolation. Yeah, yeah. I am. We have a, a backlog of content of Justin playing Alien Isolation that has oh. not been released yet. Like, <laughs> you I, get I, spooked, I, Justin. Yeah, we had, like announced we were doing that a while back and it just never ended up getting released i think i was going to try and edit it down but never you know really got around to it but i'd like to continue playing that and maybe we can release the the videos as we go along and mm -hmm. make new videos um but, great game yeah yeah it's fantastic best one of the best alien games i've ever played um four games i've ever played honestly no it's yeah it's 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 amazing it's a great game um but now uh that that kind of gets us past the news um topics and now we're gonna get into our topic this week which uh baker tell us, <laughs> tell, us, tell, us tell us tell us what we're doing tonight what we're doing tonight boys is we are we're finally accepting our our, our role as YouTubers, we're going to do a tier list. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. What are, what are we doing? What's, what's being ranked here? Well, aliens, of course. We're ranking the xenomorphs from the movies. I didn't include the ones from the comics and the video games because there's a ton of weird variants and stuff, and we'd be here forever. Right. Um, like all the, the, with all of the them, Kenner but... toy line or whatever, yeah. Toys, yeah. So this is strictly just from the six alien films or are we also including yes. avp uh there's there are two from avp that snuck in the list yeah i i imagine I'm, I'm i figured we'd just make a tier for avp <laughs> it's kind of on its own it's just not even well I, I mean why would we why would we do that though i mean it's like if we're gonna because i'm trying to shoehorn it in well, let's see pictures of them. Let's just yeah, let's yeah. just put them in the regular rankings. Uh, okay. Um. All right. So how are we ranking them? Like, just well, that's something we got to decide. I have some ideas as far as just criteria. All we could right. do, um, you know, the most uh, iconic, the most like that we want to see more of as like high ranks, um, and then the ones that we think just were like unnecessary, um, convoluted, weird uh so so we're we're talking about like uh the how are the ones that we like the most um why, yeah. why don't we why don't we 
like create like a set of categories or, or something. It's like, uh, um, uh, or what, uh, I'm, what was the list that you, that you, what was the list of things that you-, you I'm that, saying like the most iconic, the most, uh, most scary. Icon most, icon most iconic, most scary, okay. Uh, ones we want to see more of, you know, like I want to see this alien again would be a high rank. Okay. Whereas the ones where we're like, I want that erased from my memory, that was a bad idea, made the xenomorph goofy okay. or whatever, that All would right. be lowering. All That's right. Good. And we'll kind of, we probably don't need like uh, S through F, but maybe we'll get real anal about it. So we'll see. <laughs> well, all righty then. Okay. Well, who are we judging first? The first up is the classic xenomorph. Uh, the big chap. No, wait, boy. no, no, actually, now at this point, I do have to, I do have to ask for a clarification. Are we also, <laughs> of course. because the xenomorphs differ from film to film, are we going to be like, like, if we're talking like yeah. just the classic xenomorph, are, are we going to rank like all of them individually, like from all five movies they appear in? Uh, I mean, or, I didn't or, prepare enough uh, icons for that. I was just thinking the classic design that shows up in Alien and Aliens. Okay. All right. So we're talking just like the regular like Xenomorph. Yeah. Basic Xenomorph. Grown up Xenomorph because okay. the baby Xenomorph is a separate one. Gotcha. Um, well, obviously, great design. Iconic. Strong, you, know? Um, you know, it's horrifying. It's, um, it's sexual. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's frightening. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's like it made like it's very Freudian, you know, kind right. of plays on our own insecurities and uncomfortableness with, uh, with the topic of sex. Um, you know, it's, you know, you know. Are you able to share your monster. screen, Baker? Yeah, I can. Hold up. There we go. There it All is. Right. All right, cool. So classic Xenomorph, should we start it out in S or put it in A? I feel like. I feel like it's an S. I kind of, right? I kind of feel like with this, it's it's hard to beat. Um, I would put this in S tier. Yeah, I figured we'd start start strong. All righty, cool, cool, cool. All right, no no peeking now. I have them all on just one page here. Oh. Next one is the ovomorph, which does count. Yes. Uh, okay. So the first stage of the xenomorph life uh, cycle is the ovomorph, of course. Um, yeah. into, Those uh, are the eggs, as seen in yeah. um, Alien and uh, Prometheus. Uh, no, they didn't uh, show up in Prometheus. They were in Covenants, uh, and they were in Aliens, and uh, there was one in Alien Three, and, and they're also in Resurrection. So they appear in five of the six films and then alien versus predator i don't think there's any an alien versus predator requiem uh uh is there because um, the, the, the vase huggers just kind of escape from the ship when it crashes and i should know this yeah i don't think there are any eggs yeah. but um one thing to note about the ovomorph uh hr giger um originally had it designed so it opened it just kind of had uh two lips right so it would open and the studio was like it looked too much oh. like a vagina and it's like well that's the point yeah, um, the face was fine. yeah but he said uh so i he he split it four ways so it opens up in four petals because then it still kind of resembles genitalia but then it also looks like a cross which is what you know oh. <laughs> the the people really really wanted it, it is they what they really wanted out of their alien is that it has a Jesus the thing producers, you mean wanted that? Yeah, yeah the studio oh. was worried that it that it looked too much like a vagina, which was again that was the entire point. We got so, a course crack and make it remind yeah, us. So, so 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 Giger made it look like a cross. Okay. It's all <laughs> compensating the other direction too. Well, no, it's just making fun of them. But I, I think it's fine. Okay. Um, but um I mean if we're going to compare the ovomorph to the yeah. xenomorph like and here's the thing it's like i only until like starting this podcast did not know that it was even its own entity i thought it was just an egg yeah so it's used a little on the convoluted side for me well it, it's a bit of an abstract thing to kind of compare the ovomorph to the xenomorph uh, it, it's because it's like like but that's what we're here to do baby they do pique the audience 
audience's interest. They do. I will say that, you know, you look at that weird egg when they're walking in there, an alien, and like... And, and you might not even necessarily think of them as eggs uh, initially. Um, sure, sure. And, and then... Like what, or... But then when it opens up, it's, you know, you know, you know John Hurt is in trouble. It is uh, very alien. So. Yes, yes, it is. And, and also, like, when we first see them in the movie, it's like they're on this crashed ship, and why did it crash? And there's, like, a whole, why was it carrying all the eggs? You know, it's, there's a lot of mystery there. Um, and, yeah, it, it definitely kind of brings up a lot of questions about, you know, what is this thing supposed to be? Why were they carrying thousands of them? Um sure. I, For me, it jumps into tier B. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Is it why, why tier it B? Does the job. It does the job, but it's not like so iconic that it's, even on the cover of Alien, isn't it like a different egg with like light coming out of so, it? So yeah, it was actually a, I think it was a chicken egg. Right, <laughs> right. So it's like I, this I, design didn't really sell. Yeah, really. I, I think I think that was actually really kind of a good idea because it it still sells the idea of an alien, but it also preserves the mystery of what's to come. Sure. Oh, it's a great cover. Yeah. But as far as this design goes, it's like right. less iconic. I do think, uh, I think B tier is fine for now. Um, okay. yeah, Plus it's really... like you're scared of the, the face hugger that's in it. Yeah, it's, it, the, it's, it's definitely a cool design. It's just like you are saying, it's not the main attraction. Yeah. Mm. All okay, right. I'm happy with right. that. I'm right. Happy with that. Right on, right uh, on. Let's grab the chest burster, the baby xenomorph. All right. So I on. decided to put separately, just even though it is, you know, the same entity that grows. Well, up. I mean, if we're gonna judge the ovomorph, you know, then right. we have to talk about <laughs> if we're gonna judge all, you know, all the uh, various, uh, you know, parts of the alien life cycle. Let's talk about. We gotta sure. talk about the chest burster. Um, Obviously, again, another classic movie scene. Um, you know, terrifying. It, I, I like its appearance in Aliens, especially that that yeah, scene with the uh, colonist. That that's brutal. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, uh, of course, the theatrical cut of Alien Three, which has a uh, uh, the Queen chestburster coming out of oh. Ripley, and uh, yeah, I, the, the, yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh and then there's a we haven't watched alien resurrection yet but there's a really goofy chest burster uh scene in that movie oh i uh, kind of remember what you're yeah, talking about i think yeah, yeah. it's yeah it holds somebody's face you know, <laughs> yeah. as the it's thing is coming much. out and then it just bursts out of out of his yeah. chest and then out of the guy's head <laughs> it's so goofy the body burster yeah well the body burster might be something else um <laughs> maybe Maybe. Um, so I kind of feel, here's what I feel about this. Um, if we're going to say the Ovomorph is B tier, then I, I kind of feel like the chest burster has to be A tier. Mm -hmm. It has it has to be in between. Uh, yeah, I don't and, think it's the best though. And, and, I, and I will, you know, kind of predict this. I, I have a feeling the Ovomorph is going to get kicked down a few notches. Yeah, yeah, we might be, we got to calibrate still, yeah, so. Right. It's all subject um, to change. Now, let me be the devil's advocate here. Is the chest burster in any way cooler than the xenomorph? I would say the chest burster is as cool as the xenomorph. That's... I mean, that first scene is, is pretty intense. The first impression yeah. of the xenomorph is the chest burster. In yeah, sense. and it's, it's like, it probably goes down in history as one of the scariest movie scenes mm -hmm. ever. Uh, and, Definitely, yeah. and there's so much going into it there's so much about like the idea of your body being used you mm -hmm. know as a you know an incubator for this 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 creature um you know that's so the, if we're talking about just the first movie i have showed it to people more recently and they think it looks kind of fake the chest burster which i can understand i mean i mean <laughs> It's a movie from 1979. Right, that's the thing. I think it's just people not uh, in no. the mind of the era. No, I, I don't know if um, this is on your list, but um, 
there's a, there is kind of a slight difference uh, in design between uh, the chest burster that we see in the main four Alien movies and then the one we see in Alien Covenant. Uh, the Alien Covenant oh. one actually has limbs. Yeah. Um, oh, it doesn't? Okay, it, well, the, the Xenomorph from Alien Covenant I have separately. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I was yeah. just... But... Um, so so what's what are you guys feeling? I'm, I I want to either I like I, a. I, I, I kind of want to do A tier with the chest. I'm burster. thinking S, but oh. yeah, the A's have it. What's the case for S? Um, I think it's as iconic as the xenomorph, and it's as I scary. Agree, to be honest, just because I was saying iconic as part of the criteria, but this thing is like it, in some ways the chest burster scene actually is a little bit like. That right. everyone ever knows that scene. The the alien doesn't necessarily have like a scene. Right. You don't look, even see much of it. it, it, until it, yeah, like, it I mean, it, it definitely has great moments and it's frightening when it shows up, but it doesn't necessarily have you know, you know it, the I would say, you know, the more I think about it, I say, yeah, I think S tier is totally appropriate for the chess bursar. Sure. Yeah, I I'm I'm in agreement with you guys. Uh, cool. think you made, but there it is all right well what's what's next what do we got here oh, let me cut this boy out the xenomorph queen how about well yeah fuck it let's just go right i, I don't right, want to do cool. all the best hits first but all right well maybe pick a more obscure one after this uh um, yeah. so the xenomorph queen is a bit of a contentious idea in the fandom um some people like it a lot i'm one of those people i think it's cool it's it's a it it's kind of an extension of the creature that we see in the first movie where it's kind of mysterious about what it actually is um but then this kind of puts it into a little bit more context and it gives it like this idea of uh like a creature like a an insect or what have you that has you know this life cycle a complex life cycle and then sure. for the same exact reasons, there's a bunch of people that really dislike the queen. Um, right, because I think part of it is it's illuminating this thing in the dark that is exactly. scary because we don't know much about it. And then they start to understand, oh, it's like a hive. And but, but I think for me, the reason why it works is because it's, um, it's a natural evolution. Like if you're gonna, like Aliens is a masterclass in raising the stakes from the first movie. It's, it's a great, it's a perfect sequel. Yeah, in no, so many right. ways and i think having the queen in there that's just again that's a natural evolution of the idea of the alien in my mind um this is a it, tough one actually yeah it really is um the queen of course has um a, you know a big appearance in aliens and it's revealed that she is uh not only you know uh ferocious but she's she's very intelligent um uh, so and this might be the one thing about aliens that does kind of get to me it's like the scene where she figures out how to use the elevator is like a little bit of a stretch for me but right, yeah. because like there's she can be smart but i don't think she understands how technology works like she built the nest inside of a nuclear reactor that's about to explode i mean and you'd think she could just climb the shaft. She wouldn't need to use the elevator. Right. Well, I mean, it'd be interesting if it would show her strength if um, you know, she just kind of tore through the, the metal and like right. burst it out or something. That so would they, have been. They do that in AVP where she's running on the yeah. ice. And yeah. That, and, and, and I do, and I do got to say about AVP, like, I don't particularly like those movies, but the queen was done very well in the first AVP. And yeah, it's I like, say what you will. Some people don't like the CGI. I think it looks fantastic. And uh, it yeah. Fine she, right, right up until the end, not the CGI, but just her, the use of the queen where she's literally chasing someone on the snow. I just, I didn't vibe with sure, that. Sure. I mean, sure. I get it. It's, it's just kind of, you know, standard, you know, like it's almost like just like Jurassic Park at that point, but right. I, yeah. I, I, I do yeah. think it's scary to see this giant thing running. I, I, I don't know. I, I maybe it was the environment that felt weird, but yeah, because it takes place on Earth. <laughs> yeah, and in the snow, which I guess is fine. Yeah, none, nothing about that makes any sense. The predators don't 
they come down to earth on the hottest time of the year. It's specifically <laughs> mentioned because they need the heat. So why the fuck are they doing this in Antarctica? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but that's that, what, was, that was a choice. <laughs> it was a choice. It, boy, it was a choice. Um, but I like the queen in AVP. I think she's badass. Um, is she more badass than the Xenomorph? Mm. I'm feeling A for the queen myself. It might be a good place to put it for now. See, yeah, there might yeah. be some stuff that recalibrates, but the the I, I would say for now the the thing is like if we're talking about her as an icon, I I think the chestburster scene is more referenced in our popular culture, yeah. but I still think people remember the queen, and of course, one of the most famous movie lines ever is "Get away from her, you bitch." Sure, that's but true. I think, but I think people like who are less familiar with the movies, they see a, a Funko Pop of the Chestburster, the Xenomorph, and the Queen Xenomorph. Mm -hmm. They're not going to necessarily know that's the Queen. They're like, oh, that's a bigger Xenomorph. Right, and then also like even starting with like Alien Three, the marketing campaign, you know, started you know taking advantage of that line of you know, it's like oh, the, yeah. the bitch is back, and it's like, well, like, <laughs> it's not, it's not, not exactly. I mean, oh. the, the Queen was the bitch, you know. So this is just Different a drawing. Point. Yeah, but. I don't know. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is like people remember the chest burster specifically and the queen yeah. is a little, you know, is there and people like it and it's cool, but it's kind of in the background for the most part. I just um, realized I think I forgot the cloned queen. Oh, <laughs> from Resurrection. Okay. Well, the alien three? where Ripley, oh wait. No, no, yeah. the cloned queen is yeah, that's alien resurrection right. yeah and that actually is technically a different uh queen. It is. um I I if, picture real quick actually um yeah justin we should get to watch alien resurrection soon um you know find a good time to do that but it's a you know it, it, it's an interesting film and i don't hate it nearly as much as other people do i uh I, I like it more than an Alien 3. Definitely. Oh, it's much better than Alien 3. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Oh. I, know, I know we got Alien fans or Alien 3 fans that, that watch it, but honestly, I, Alien 3 is almost insufferable for me. I'm just like, this is a movie where nothing happens. Um, yeah, I'm more interested in the production than the details around Alien 3, what it was going to be. And yeah. stuff like that, what it yeah, was. Alien 3 is boring. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's it's not fun to watch. It's it's not interesting. It's not engaging. Nothing happens for the first two hours. I, I can't do it. What? And then everything's to, red. <laughs> yeah. Listen to me and Justin's commentary. We we rip it to shreds and try to say some good things too because there are some positive things. But for the most part, we're, if we're being honest, it's just not a great movie. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so what's this on the screen now? This, this is, is the, a cloned alien from Resurrection, which yeah. I guess. You haven't so, seen Resurrection, Justin? No, no I haven't. I, I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, but here's what I will say about this. I would definitely put her way lower than the main queen because she's got she's defective. Um, and yeah. I, and I'm kind of debating about... But from the know, look of that, that looks like a well-designed defective alien. So, so, well, so here's the funny thing. That is actually the same model from Aliens. They, re oh, wow. they, they, they dug it out of storage and refurbished <laughs> it. Um, Imagine turning on the light in this, or it, it was just a flashlight in the storage unit yeah. full of props. Yeah, it was at <laughs> Sam Winston Studios, so they, they reused it. But it's the, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about how much I want to reveal because I don't want to spoil it for Justin. But um, well, the, yeah, the, I didn't think the, of that. I have the, a the few queen, from Resurrection on here. Well, the, the queen, well, he, so the, the thing with the queen here is that kind of like how when Ripley is cloned and she has a bit of the xenomorph DNA, the queen here has a bit of human DNA. And uh, part of that is that she has a, um, a human reproductive system. So she's Whoa. not, yeah, no, it's pretty <laughs> wild. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So she's not laying eggs. She's actually in this scene here, she's actually giving birth. Um, but the reason why I would put her lower than the uh, main queen is precisely because of that. I, I think 
uh, just like if we're if we're like talking in terms of scariness she's right in the scene she's not really threatening at all she's very very compromised and mm -hmm. uh you know again not to spoil it but she does end up uh you know getting pretty badly hurt in in the scene um right it's almost and, more like pathetic than scary yeah, yeah it's and that's you know some people hated it for that reason but i think it's kind of interesting it uh, i don't sure. know i i, I think it's it, it, it is it, flavor you pity the creature you pity the creature mm -hmm. um and the and that's again i mean well, i, I kind of want to say i kind of want to save stuff for the commentary but i actually think alien resurrection does a very good job of like non-dialogue wise like letting us kind of into what the creatures might be thinking or feeling and maybe that's a bad thing in some ways but i i like it actually i think it's just less close to where this started you know yeah no i i i definitely understand the criticisms i just i like that kind of visual storytelling with it um that all said, I, I am voting to put her in D because I literally forgot this thing existed. <laughs> so it's not very memorable. Well, then shouldn't it go in don't know, don't remember? Oh, actually, yeah, I forgot I had a character um, for that. <laughs> yeah. So. And Justin hasn't seen the movie, so. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that, I'll is, know it. Maybe that yeah. is the right category. Yeah. All right, okay. cool. And so I have a couple other from Resurrection on the list. Should we do those? Okay. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Okay, there's some spoilers. But yeah. I don't mind spoilers. Ripley 8. Like you just said, Matt, she is part Xenomorph. Yeah, so this is kind of the conceit. The this list is, of Xenomorphs. Yeah, so this is the conceit of Alien Resurrection uh, that I like. I think is interesting is the notion of like Ripley sort of having a bit of the creature in her. And of course, this isn't. Uh, the original Ripley. This is a, a cloned Ripley, so it's it's a different character for all intents and purposes. But still, I, I like that idea of Ripley sort of becoming the thing that she fears. Um, mm -hmm. And I I think Sigourney Weaver does a you know I think that's one of the reasons why she even came back because she didn't want to like she, there's yeah. a reason why she wanted Ripley to die in Alien Three. She was done, but this was something that um attracted her because it's very it's just different it's a new perspective and it allows her to kind of flex her acting muscles again um i think it's a cool character yeah most definitely i i uh, like the idea of it too i think the cloned queen is a little overboard trying to mirror it like oh uh -huh. it's, a, it's an alien with human aspects mm -hmm. but i think it works well with the human with alien aspects like she's got acidic blood and crazy shit so yeah that's that's all fun i'm with that said i'm happy putting ripley a in like d tier d really i was gonna go over at least you say d i was gonna say d like what were you thinking i was thinking c or b honestly i think it's <laughs> a cool idea and i think it's like all, one of the only things people remember about alien 4 is like oh yeah ripley's a xenomorph I mean, but, sure, there's a case to be there. Right there, I just have a I feeling. Scary. <laughs> I just, well, it's it's not. It's not. That's a yeah. problem with Alien Resurrection and also Alien Three. Is like neither film is particularly scary. They're just like Alien Resurrection is just kind of interesting. It's got interesting right, ideas. Sure. Um, but the reason I was saying D is because I just have a feeling it's going to get knocked down once we start looking at some of these other ones. Sure, that's fair. Um, I, I, I'm okay with D. I mean, honestly, uh, yeah, sure. Now, considering the horror aspect, it's like, yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's all right. Sorry, Alien Four, but uh, uh, let's do an obscure-ish one from a prequel, maybe the Hammerpeed. So the thing uh, I like about the Hammerpeed, uh, and especially when I first saw it in the trailers, is it looks very much like a kind of proto base hugger. Um, yeah. And it doesn't really have any kind of re reproductive capabilities. Um, Isn't it just but, like a worm that got? Yeah, it's like, just kind of worm. Um, but and I and I think that's actually very deliberate, personally, because I think they wanted to show with the the trilobite later that 
because mm-hmm. it came from a human it's it reproduces you know in a human way it needs a body um but this thing just kind of came from asexual worms and doesn't necessarily um you know need another body to to reproduce even though it does try to crawl inside milburn's mouth um sure. yeah that's that's interesting actually um i think this so the hammer peed scene is might be my favorite scene in Prometheus, honestly, because it is <laughs> really well. And and putting aside the, you know, we have the two comic relief characters, um, Milburn and Fifield, you know, poking and prodding at this thing. We see Milburn's hand in this this image here. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite scenes, just because this little motherfucker here is is horrifying and what it, yeah. it what it does in this scene is like it, it just kind of like true to nature like animals are sometimes so much stronger than what we realize and in this case it's like milburn you know fucks around and finds out really quick that this thing is a uh, you know it, it wraps around his arm and it squeezes so tightly and it ends up like breaking his arm and it's just like ah it's right and then you know, and then of course Fightfield tries to cut it off of him and then it sprays acid blood in his face and then slithers into Milburn's suit and then crawls down his throat. It's just it's such a great a plot. Like, <laughs> it, well, it's it's like at this point in time in the plot of Prometheus, the horror has kind of been delayed. And then in this scene, mm-hmm. it hits you head on. And I think it's I think it's great, you know, personally. I um, like the creature design a lot. I think the scene is just a little goofy because of how naive the characters are. It is. Uh, it, 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 I, it, and it's not earned. We like it's right, not established that's earlier something. that Milburn is if it was established earlier that Milburn was kind of reckless, this yeah, might like make he sense. Grabs a, he grabs a snake and gets bit or something. Or or like, some or I think there was a deleted scene for Prometheus where he finds one of the worms and he like is like really excited about it but even then i don't think that establishes yeah some exactly. precedent of harmless like alien yeah, life <laughs> yeah like yeah something like that i think some of the writing in prometheus is is kind of messy even though i like the film uh, i think this is one of those things because we're supposed to accept that this character is just going to do this and it doesn't feel natural sure yeah, yeah. Um, for me this jumps into b tier alongside the alien egg the overmore i kind of yeah. i kind of agree with that that's kind uh, of what i was thinking as well boys uh, yeah because again i really like this scene i think this, this might be my what favorite scene in Prometheus. what is it just in that scene that's the only scene that's on well it, it i mean yeah that's really the only scene and then it shows up very briefly later when they find milburn's body and it slithers out his mouth oh sure um and yeah uh but yeah i like i think this thing is uh is great i i love it yeah, it's cool. Kind of looks like yes. a proto face hugger of sorts, but you know, not really. Yeah. Um. Looking good. Looking uh, good. All right. Uh, well, let's go for. Hmm. Because you brought it up, let's do the trilobite next. Okay, or trilobite. Baby, baby squid. The baby squid. Congratulations. I like this guy. <laughs> I like him too. I like how yeah. big he gets in like an hour. Yeah. Uh, so the thing I like about all the creature design in Prometheus is that it's very much based upon like life on Earth. Like e- even if you look at something like the xenomorph, the xenomorph isn't really like anything that we see on Earth, which is you know what's great about it. It's you know it's truly alien and it's a monster. Uh, but mm-hmm. what I like about like the hammer peed and the trial by is that these feel like they could be real animals um and this like prehistoric ones maybe or you know deep deep sea animals um and this thing of course really plays into that and it's all the more interesting because it was born in a human reproductive system right Um, and that's yeah because we the whole through line of covenant is we're going to go find our mm -hmm. roots as humanity and then we yeah. find something kind of like us it's part of us but this might be the reason why i like alien resurrection because I, I i like how the movie and it ties into prometheus I, i'm not just going on another thing about resurrection i like how resurrection um sort of 
asks questions about the nature of these things and you know it, I, I think kind of bringing a human perspective to it all and blending the creatures with human dna kind of blurs mm -hmm. that line between man and monster and it, it I, does that way better than resurrection i think i i, I agree i 100 percent agree with you but i think that's what's interesting about this thing is that unlike the hammerpede uh, this thing also reproduces because it was born uh, from, you know, the act of sex, essentially. Um, right. and I, yeah, I, I thought that was the point of Prometheus, honestly. I thought, oh, so that's why the alien is what it is. And then Covenant goes in a completely different direction. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, but, else. <laughs> but I, yeah, I thought that was the, the hint. Um, so let me ask you this, Baker this right we're not like is this like we're just judging the trilobite or are we just looking at baby trilobite here uh, i think both uh, yeah oh, okay so there's not a separate category for the the adult no i didn't do that just because they're like one scene apart when it grows up so i didn't think to but okay. I, I was thinking about it attacking the engineer for this entry is it called something else once it's bigger or is it still the trilobite um I think it's still called the trilobite. Um, yeah, and it just gets giant, right? Pretty yeah, much, it, looks, it looks very yeah. similar. Like, so, yeah, 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 it yeah. looks like a big. It, its tentacles split, and uh, it has more of them. And again, kind of showing the strength of you know these things. You wouldn't expect to be like super strong, but like an octopus is all muscle, you know. Oh yeah, and that's you know that's crazy. But I think the baby one. Um, isn't able to really do too much harm but perhaps i think could... it's still a horrifying scene though when it's pulled out and you're like oh my god she was pregnant with that thing like yeah that's pretty scary i i think the ideas sure. behind the scene are definitely scary i i think it it's you know it's a much more like sexual version of like the chestburster scene because mm, it's it's more yeah. uncomfortable in that way but the i i, I will be honest about something everybody remembers the med pot scene in prometheus um i don't know for me oh, okay. for me i i don't know i didn't quite buy it I, I, really I, oh just how the machine like gives her well yeah like, well first off yeah it's just like it just cuts yeah. her open and then it's like a claw machine um, yeah. like the, <laughs> yeah. um but then the other thing is it, it's just like there's everything that was like happening before it like she shoves all the other scientists out of the way and runs to the med pod it's like why aren't they trying why aren't they getting up and trying to stop her there was just too many distractions for me yeah um, unfortunately i think that hurts a lot of the designs in prometheus and covenant it's just the logic of the scene that the yeah. design appears in which is yeah. unfortunate because a lot of it's really cool looking and well designed but but i i will say on its own I, I think it's it's a you know it's good it's a scary scene but there's a reason why the hammer peed scene is like more it sticks out to me more I think it it nails the horror a lot more at least as sure, far yeah. as like the punch of it mm -hmm. and this is more scary in terms of the ideas behind it yeah I feel you yeah I could so maybe C tier for this one yes yeah. I would put it I would put it C tier even though it, it's kind of awesome that it takes down an engineer at the end, but yeah, it uh, deep throats him. That's a nasty way to go. <laughs> um, I would say the best way to go, Matt. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. I don't I kink shame. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, we got some interesting ones left. Let's uh, jump. Let's get uh, this one. One of my personal favorites. <laughs> Alien versus Predators regular ass alien who got caught in a net <laughs> yeah and so and then uh they were able to sell a bunch of toys i have a fun co <laughs> um yeah. so iconic i mean i think it was literally designed to be an icon um yeah, the, the ones from alien vs prayer are kind of a joke but i even put them on here but so here's the thing with grid um and the problem with like a lot of the versus kind of movies in general so i did not buy that this like it's hard for me to buy the idea that one alien killed two predators like i know the yeah. logic in the story is that the predators didn't have their shoulder cannons and that was like a oh, point, but, but i'm just kind of like 
well, wait a minute. They have everything else. Like, they, <laughs> they need this, ceremonial guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I just, again, I just kind of don't buy that this thing killed two predators. But since it happened, I guess it's <laughs> kind of badass. Um, Justin uh, hasn't seen either AVP movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe for the best. Um, I don't know. Uh, Baker, you picked this guy out. What do you got to say thinking, about him? I was thinking F, honestly, just because it annoys me. And it is, it's it, not it, scary in the alien. Uh, it, it's PG-13. Yeah, so it's, they can't even. Yeah, it's not scary. And it's also doesn't really have any substance. It's like this is, they wanted to have, like I said, an alien to sell more action figures. Um, yep. And he, he doesn't really play any kind of real significant role in the story. Beyond. It, it's like, oh, it's that one alien. Right. Um, <laughs> I know. It's, and, it's just funny to me that they even did this. I mean, I, 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 get I, why. I, I, I get why. It's like, oh, he killed two predators. We got to identify him. But, um, yeah, but that's the other problem is it fucks with power levels. And it's, yeah, like, yeah, it's, just, so it's just, yeah, I just don't buy that it killed two predators. That's the problem. Also, I've always had a question about that scene where they fight mm -hmm. and you're, you've got a stop motion background. Were they doing stop motion in that scene or was it a weird frame rate thing? It was, I, I think it, I, I know what you're talking about. Um, it was a frame rate thing, I think. I figured they, it had to been. But... It, yeah, they, they mixed a lot of CGI and animatronics, um, but the two don't really blend together very well, unfortunately. Okay. And, and, but yeah, the, it, it's, it's just kind of a, it seems to me like it maybe the shot was too slow and they like sped it up a bit or something. I'm sure. not sure. It, it, I could see that. Um, that was but, good. We got something on every tier now, at least. Yeah. Nice yeah. balanced, balanced right. list. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep let's this going. Let's try the, the protomorph from Covenant. All right. Now, I have a problem with the language here. Um, okay. it, it is not. <laughs> technically a protomorph it is a xenomorph um okay. but but this is what i was asking you about because i read because when i was saying like are we judging the xenomorphs from like different movies like there is a difference between like the big chap and the original and you sure. know this guy they're different presentations of the same creature um i know some people in our audience you know probably don't uh agree with me on that but i <laughs> I did um, not uh, get into the weeds too much on this, so I kind of followed the list I found. Sure. But they distinguished this as a, a separate thing. So is yeah. there a noticeable design difference? Because well, I guess the, it's more... The design difference is this. This one okay. was designed... This one was um, made with CGI, and the original was a guy in a suit. Um, <laughs> well, right, uh, but I mean, like, the biology of him. Is he, no, is he I... What I'm kind of getting at is like the technology has changed in the last 40 years. So they're able to represent the creature, you know, in a different, more organic, lifelike way, which is why the, you know, quote unquote, protomorph kind of appears to be different from like the original xenomorph. But sure. um, I, I ascribe that again to just the technology. I like I don't see anything design-wise that's supposed to indicate to us that right. this is supposed to be a different animal. They it's clearly the, did that with the neomorph. The that which was that was the point to show like a, the the pre xenomorph was with that. Like I, I thought yeah. I'm looking at this like oh yeah it's the xenomorph and that's how it's <laughs> credited and that's what Ridley calls it. You know that it's in the credits as you know it's a xenomorph i don't know where the protomorph thing came from oh so if you want we can put this in f tier just the concept of a protomorph well well <laughs> here my rant aside about like the language uh of, of it it does look different you think i, I think i do, I do think it looks time. different but it's okay. like what you, what, in what way you um Definitely in the way it uh, moves and uh, in the some of the details, like uh, you can see the skull, I think, much more prevalently. And the neck, maybe? Looks yeah. Like around the, the shoulders, I and guess. And it's more sinewy all throughout. Yeah. 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 I mean, there, I mean, the original alien, you know, is is kind of almost kind of artistic in a way in the way they blended like 
mechanical and biological elements, you know, biomechanical. Um, and then this one, because there's such a more prominent like nature theme, they, they leaned more towards the organic and biological elements of the xenomorph rather than the mechanical ones, which, you know, made sense to mm -hmm. me. Um, I, I enjoyed its performance. I thought I, it was the one of the better I, parts of the Covenant, except for how it was used sometimes. Well, so yeah, the third act of Alien Covenant is really silly. Uh, yeah. I, it's just like, you know, it's it's just redoing things that we've seen in, um, you know, the other, it's, it's basically a replay of the first Alien. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, just in terms of obviously technology has come so far, it's yeah. like, they can execute cooler sequences with the xenomorph. And well, uh, that's all fine. But but here here but I I do I do have a little bit more to say. Um, it, Justin, you were bringing up that it like crawls around more. It's more animalistic. I I would say that was sort of happening in Aliens already. Mm, yeah, and, you know what I mean. Like the yeah, but as and I'm just going back making a case that I, I don't know if I would call this a different creature, a variation maybe, but I wouldn't call the you know a different creature. But speaking on the xenomorph slash protomorph itself, um, I enjoyed the way it moved and whatnot, and I, I enjoyed it, like you said, bigger its performance. It, it, in some <laughs> ways, it you know, it's running around like an animal, but then there's some scenes when it's just walking on two legs and that made it really weird and alien. Um, mm -hmm. And I, uh, I appreciated I think, those little details about it. Yeah, if we have grid on this list, I think it's fair to have this guy as a separate beast. I would wait, I, I would rate this thing much higher than grid. I would sure. actually be, happy with putting it even in B tier, honestly. Yeah. I was thinking C. C or B. Yeah. The, the thing that I'm getting at is like, the whole third act of Alien Covenant is really silly, just it, in general, but the the Xenomorph itself, I thought was, you know, all right. Sure. I think it, as looking at it as like a Xenomorph remastered edition, mm -hmm. I, 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 I put it on the same tier as the Hammer P, I think. Okay. No, I, I, was, would, I, I, I will say though um the decision to you know make this particular scene the decision to do it during the daytime um doesn't yeah, really yeah. work like <laughs> no it's like midsummer yeah i i mean it's it just kind of turns it into a silly action movie um however like if we're talking just like iconic um yeah I mean, this, this, this thing kind of has become the face of the franchise in the modern era I mean, that's why i was leaning higher is because it is just the original iconic design yeah, yeah this up, yeah so. this gets promoted all the time when you know when talking about yeah. aliens so this isn't the, the, the exact and, the wind and all yeah, that yeah this isn't the exact shot but you know we know which one we're talking about right it, yeah it, yeah it just comes to mind this so i i'd be so just I understand putting it in C tier. I, I think there's enough to kind of just bump it up to B. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, all right. All right, what, what are we doing next here? Uh, we got like six more. Sure. Well, I we mean, got, uh, I can count. There's eight. <laughs> You're not supposed to look at that page. Here we got the the egg sacks. Okay, so here's I got something <laughs> to say about these things. Okay. okay. So the xenomorph is referred to several times throughout the franchise as being the perfect organism, which doesn't make sense for so many reasons. Um, but then I'm, but yeah. even if we're taking that on face value, isn't an organism that can like generate itself from tiny near microscopic spores more efficient than something that has to shoot a crab under your face? <laughs> This is why I put convoluted in the criteria. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we're talking just, uh, what, are, what are these things even called again? The They're egg sacs? Neomorphic egg sacs. Neomorphic egg sacs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess these are, okay, I remember this now because that's why it, the neomorphic. I thought they were cool when I saw the yeah, Alien I, Covenant. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they're, I think... no, I, I think they're cool. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, wait a minute, is this, 
technically, if we're going to use perfect, I, I mean, I don't know, perfection is, <laughs> is kind of a weird standard, but isn't this more efficient? I don't know. Um, sure. I, I, sure. I think these things are pretty cool. And the, uh, the moats, um, which are the little spores that they shoot out are, you know, insidious and they know how they can just sort of, you know, it's like without, a virus. Or... Yeah, but that like a virus. Yeah, just sort of spreads to you. It goes inside your body. And then a uh, few moments later, we're given birth to a neomorph, uh, mm -hmm. a blood burster, rather. Um, right. um, Put that on here. <laughs> yeah, the thing that I like, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a cool idea playing into the idea of uh, the alien as an infection. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I like uh, the function. I don't know if the design is anything. Well, as, here's yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I am thinking, yeah, because they actually are. I think based on real uh, fungus, actually. Sure. Uh, um, I think it's the same thing. Once we get everything kind of in ranked, and then we start like because inevitably we're going to kind of look at what we've done right and we're going to like say <laughs> okay wait a minute you what know, have we done yeah I, I i and start kind of rearranging i feel like kind of like the overmorph we might see this one knock down a, a few tiers wherever we put it and sidebar it till the end no no i think we should no i think we should put it in somewhere um i think d tier would be fine i, I, I would put it. it i would put it in d tier because Honestly, I, I think the other things that are left are going to... Right, comparing it to all these other ones. It's like... Yeah. Also, I mean, again, the logic of the scene, I don't want it to hurt uh, the raw idea too much, but the fact that they weren't wearing helmets and shit is kind of goofy. Yeah. So. I mean, they're trying to play the idea of, like, they're pioneers, they're exploring sure. a new world, but, yeah, I hear you. It's uh, it, it's the same. It's the problem, of Prometheus. Why did they take off their helmets? Right. Yeah. And so it's like, like oh, we just avoid we just avoid that problem altogether. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hey, it's a full send. Yeah. Full send moment. All right. Uh, we got got some interesting ones left. You know what? Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I didn't even see the face hugger. Let's do the face hugger. Uh, okay. So that jumps up high for I, I, me. Yeah, I, uh, okay. I, I automatically almost want to put it in S tier. Honestly. S tier. It's really the only place. Yeah. Yeah. This um, thing is just as yeah, iconic. Yeah. As so yeah, the, the, yeah. The face hugger is a horrifying creature that uh, face fucks you to death. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it is the perfect organism. You're right. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's what Ash was referring to. Ash and David uh and that and that engineer from and then when they cut open the leg and the blood fucking spurts out like yeah. that's oh, incredible yeah it's a wonderful defense mechanism you don't dare kill yeah. it um yeah it's a that was a ingenious plot point because it's like well yeah why can't you just cut it off it's like oh it's got molecular acid for blood yeah and, and we're in space being, being dormant and being still and still being so scary is like i mean it's top-notch horror yeah no, it's everything about it. Yeah, it's great. Um, S tier. No, that's good. We got another S tier up there. Mm -hmm. I forgot about him. I was like, there's more good. iconic stuff than that. Uh, oh, and there might be another one. But okay. let's do the runner. <laughs> so, I didn't know what this was. but So this is from Alien 3, of course. Um, and yeah. depending on which version of Alien 3 you watch, the runner either emerges from an ox or emerges from a dog. The ox oh, right. does yeah. not work. Like I, <laughs> like people who love the assembly cut, the ox doesn't make any sense. It looks like a dog. Yeah, it looks like a dog, and it moves like a dog. Or yeah. Like a yeah. Uh, it just you know I understand in the assembly cut wanting to kind of show the alternative scenes and everything, but um, but yeah, I, I, I think. I think it's an interesting concept that, and this was really the thing that introduced the idea of like the xenomorph kind of taking traits after its host. Like up until this point, we've really only ever right. seen, you know, xenomorphs that emerge from human beings, but this is a xenomorph that emerged from an animal. And because of that, it takes on some more animalistic traits. And I think that's smart and that makes sense. It's kind of like how the queen 
is the natural evolution in some ways, you know, kind of like, well, there's another part of this life cycle we're not seeing. I think this is something that kind of deepens how xenomorphs actually function biologically. Yeah, um, and where the series went, I mean, this is kind of the first uh, species hybrid situation going on that we've seen, so. Yeah, well, I mean, the, technically Pretty every cool. xenomorph is a hybrid. Um, right, but opposed to the classic formula, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's cool how the runner, I like how it moves, is, is, is interesting. Um, I don't think it's great, the I, yeah. switch between CG and... So, no, uh, no, 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 it's actually not CG, that's a common misconception. It's actually uh, rod puppetry that was composited, and I... Oh. But here's the thing, I agree with you, the, uh, all the scenes <laughs> with the... Even though I like how it moves, and I think it's interesting, it doesn't really fit into the scene and like this shot that you have pulled up here this is um this is a prime example of like this doesn't feel like it's actually present in the shot and yeah so kind of yeah. like kind of like how in avp where the animatronics and the cg didn't mix whenever they switch back to the suit it doesn't feel like there's any kind of cohesion there mm -hmm. and it being more animal too i think makes it less scary when it goes bipedal, it's it's yeah. more iconic, you know. Well, uh, yeah, and, and on pores all the time, it's like uh, it. Of course, Alien Three um, had a very troubled uh, production history. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, well documented, um, and I. It's unfortunate. I think it led to a lot of the discrepancies that we do see in the final film. Um, wanting to create a more animalistic version of the alien given the way it's born makes sense but i don't think they really had time to really or you know i don't think they really had enough good direction mm -hmm. to do what they truly needed to do with it um unfortunately even the film was nominated for an academy award for best visual effects in 1992. yeah sure for no, yeah. losing to terminator 2. <laughs> Probably deserved. Um, I mean, Terminator Two deserved the uh, the award that year, hands down. Uh, but yeah, it didn't. Uh, it did not age well. There's only one CG shot in the whole movie. It's when uh, the skull cracks mm. open at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the only CG uh, in the movie. Um, yeah, what, do you guys, what do you guys feel about this boy? For me, uh, the poor quality of the uh, compositing knocks it down quite a bit. So I'm thinking C tier, maybe just because the idea is so interesting. I think that you know sure. that offsets it enough yeah, to get it up there. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be even more harsh than you. I put it in D tier. <laughs> I was thinking F or D. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, if you're thinking C or F, D is a good compromise. What do you guys? And and the reason I'm I'm being more harsh on it is. Precisely because what Justin said, um, the the uh, the presentation. actual presentation of the creature is not good. Uh, but then on top of that, there's also a lot of lingering questions about it. Like there's still stuff in in three that does not make sense with any of the established lore. And there's like how one face hugger impregnated two people, and you know one of them was had a queen and one of them didn't sure and, but and, uh, all the engineering of the creature aside i think even just the result of what it is is like kind of underwhelming it's just like making it completely quadrupedal to me like you're not taking it up a notch and bringing it down a notch for me but. Uh, i think I, I i understand what you're saying i wouldn't i don't know if i put it in f tier still. <laughs> harsh, yeah um well, D would be the, the balance. D, D would uh, be the compromise between all of us. Um, the most divisive one so far. Yeah, really. Kind of is. Um, all right. How many more do we have left? Looks like uh, uh, we got. Yeah, we're probably going to go over no, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. How about the newborn from Alien 4? All right, so this thing is much derided by the fan base. Um, yeah. Again? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it um, at all. 
So well, I'm, I'm like going to be devil's. I'm going to be devil's advocate. Okay. I I think the newborn is the perfect accumulation of the themes that Alien Resurrection is is has been presenting. Um, yeah, it feels a little on the nose for me. Sure, uh, like a little too literal. And also, what the only reason it has eye holes is to like emote. Which, sure, and well, I guess it's pretty. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of like there's all this blending of human and alien DNA and it's the like you know how far is the slider going to go and this one's obviously skewed more towards the human side um mm -hmm. I liked that aspect of it I like the the uh, that we do kind of see it emote a little bit and we see the contrast of like these tender moments with Ripley who it perceives to be its true mother and then the horrifying, you know, you know, horrifying deaths that it that it causes. Or you know, alien resurrection is pretty outrageously violent, um, and it it kind of plays into the tragedy of the creature a little bit. It doesn't necessarily understand yeah. what it is, and um, it's for sure tragic. And I would argue, I guess, it is somewhat iconic because everyone has an opinion about it who's seen this movie um, in the fan base. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's not great. <laughs> I just don't like this thing. But well, I can be well, persuaded for like a middle of the road. Well, I here's the thing though. I'm not going to fight against putting this thing in in a lower tier. I get it. I, 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 but and I think that makes sense. But I I, I would at least kind of like to hear. And and Justin, I know you haven't seen the movie, so there's you're kind of limited, but what is it specifically about this that doesn't work for you baker for me or for justin no you no, no you I, I specifically yeah, address sorry. you <laughs> thanks sir i mostly the eye holes to be honest it's like why does it have those there aren't eyes in them you know yeah, there are it's eyes in, in them oh there are yeah there's it does. in there no oh. no it has eyes that's part of the reason why it's emotive Okay. Um, <laughs> get I guess, I don't know get on top of your alien, you know, <laughs> or sir. True. True. Um, um, and it's it's just like, I don't know. It's taking the xenomorph and, and making it into this like, I like what it's doing thematically, and like I like the tragedy of it, but it's it, not scary to me at all. It's kind of weirdly done. Like I said, a little on the nose. Like, okay, we we get what you're trying to say. And it, it didn't have to be so. Yeah, there, there's a question of like why. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I completely understand that. Um, Justin, there's obviously you're again you're kind of limited in your perspective here, but just kind of like what you see here, the newborn, like what do you I don't like? like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about the design? Do you not like? Um, it's gross and not in a cool way. <laughs> right it's really you should see the whole body actually because the whole body is yeah. really something yeah Doesn't it have um, a beer gut yeah it, it has a beer cut and originally it had genitalia and they removed oh that right post, which is like a french director yeah well yeah, well, that was, it, yeah. well that was <laughs> well, 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 well jean-pierre junet's uh, like said well i am french we have to put a sexy scene in the movie and we have to show the aliens genitalia and then everybody's looking at it like you know, no. And so they did, I don't know how much they spent to digitally remove the genitalia in post, but it, you don't notice. It. Does the version in the movie have like a cut there on its crotch? Mm -mm, no, it's, they completely no? okay, like so. just replaced it with skin. Um, That's and, and, it, and it's, and it looks good. Like, it, like they did a good job, but it's like how much did they spend to cover that up? You know, a lot of the toys have that design. Because I, I think that came late in production. Okay, I'll yeah. show. I can't find a full body shot of it from the movie, so okay. Well, just for reference, yeah, it, I it is. I, I do understand why people don't like it. It it's uncomfortable, but not necessarily in the right ways. Um, it's like a Witcher monster or something. It looks a little bit better that whole body shot. Yeah, this isn't from the movie, but okay. Yeah, but you see, it's yeah. got the junk uh, at the bottom that they removed. It, it had like a combination of like male and female genitalia. Yeah, it looks uh, kind of Nosferatu. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. it's, it's I guess. Neat. I guess when we finally do the resurrection commentary, um, you can <laughs> That'll you know, be good. Give, give us our your actual thoughts on it, Justin. But um, but for now, where where are we thinking uh, of like ranking this thing, Baker? I don't. I feel like I don't know for this one because again, it is like sort of iconic, but not in the right I'm, way. Right? I'm I'm gonna be devil's advocate, and I'm gonna say sure. I'm gonna put the newborn in C tier. I could. That C is fine too. That was saying middle of the uh, road. But, well, well, I mean just. Well, I'm and I'm think saying it's that, better than the um oh quadruped right. alien. Uh um, some in, yeah, in some ways because it actually okay. has like a well that's theme to it. I mean, like I mean, if you guys want to argue anything that I'm saying, please go ahead. I'm just like I am a devil's advocate for alien resurrection. Um, yeah, I know that like there's because uh, here's the thing. My suggestion to put it in C tier. Uh, has you know uh, made a lot of people very very angry because they're saying put it in fucking F tier, right? and I, <laughs> and I, uh, I think we there's a good amount of justification going on here. Again, based on the criteria of this list, the concept of this thing is spooky, and and it is interesting and it is iconic. Um, that said, I'm, I I don't want them to erase this from history because I think it's fun and like a weird entry in the series. So that's what I want in F is just erase this completely. Maybe we can compromise and put it in D tier. Or what do you think? Uh, I mean, I was between C and I don't know. So I wasn't saying it was bad. I just Justin, what, what based on what you know so far, Justin, what do you what do you feel? I really can't say. Um you know, I would have you know, I'm, okay, we'll put it we'll put it there for now and then we'll we'll talk about yeah. it um okay but we'll go we'll come back to that one um all right four left four left let's do the neomorph the neomorph um i i might have a controversial one for this so maybe not i like the neomorph yeah i i, I was gonna say i actually really like the neomorph i was gonna say a for the neomorph because i think it's like a new kind of alien done in the right way like the queen but different yeah, uh, say, let's discuss it a little bit, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. am leaning in that I, direction. I would, I would definitely say A is appropriate because I, I think the Neomorph, as far as like trying to demonstrate like a more primal version of the Xenomorph before we see the more refined version genetically engineered by David is really cool and really interesting. And again, kind of like how Prometheus was taking a lot of inspiration for real life animals, the Neomorph kind of does so in a way too um it, like in how it, you know it's much more animalistic obviously for one thing but then you know the biology of it and kind of seeing how fast it grows and everything and uh, how human it is too i really right. i was really just thinking that. they do that so much better than the newborn with this where like just it having red blood that's not only scary because it's like oh my god there's like something relatable about this thing but the the, it's, the it's, neomorph it's, has red blood. No, it doesn't. It has green yeah. blood. Doesn't it? The neomorph. Hold on. Neomorph has green blood, sir. What? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the newborn has uh, has uh, actually the newborn has I think green oh, it's blood. Yellow. Yellow, it's yellow, but it's not acidic. Yeah. It's, that's the so that's the interesting thing is that it's actually not acidic, but somehow it actually was able to melt off. Walter's, oh. hand, which I, I was like, there's a discrepancy oh, yeah. there that I'm like, wait a minute, what? Um, you know, the scene I was thinking of is where it's covered in blood because it had been born. Yeah. That, that was the dude's blood. Yeah. Or That's a shame because I, I thought that was really cool. But the yellow blood, this thing's less scary to me now, to oh, be honest. Oh, it just <laughs> took a color change and now it's. Might knock it down. Right? I'm all about my color theory, bro. Oh, man. Well, I like the Neomorph quite a bit. Um, I, I like the scene. I, I, I think the scene when it first emerges as the bloodburster is, you know, if you get past all the, the bad writing uh, with the human characters, it's uh, pretty horrifying and, you know, classic alien. Um, and then I like how it later plays into the themes about artificial intelligence later with, um, uh, so it's like, we know these things are like 
you know, kind of just ravenous and they're going off after everything that moves except for um, David, you know, cause, and it's like when in that scene with David is, is interesting because it's like, it recognizes this is a, another being, but it's not flesh, it's not meat. And it doesn't even really seem to know how to regard it. And then like, it's, 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 an interest, it's, it's an interesting moment that kind of plays into some of the themes of Alien Covenant. Mm-hmm. I still want yeah. to put this thing in A tier. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed by what I've learned, but I still agree. you saw the movie though. It <laughs> well, I explained why I thought it was red as that scene. Yeah, but it wasn't its blood it burst it out of the guy's back. You know. No, no, not that scene. Later when it's grown up, it's all bloody. Well, it was eating uh, yeah, what's yeah. her face. I realize now, but I don't remember when this thing gets hurt and we see its blood. Uh, it gets shot to death by Orem, and then it also oh. gets uh, the the second. Well, that was the second Neomorph. The first Neomorph also gets shot to death, um, okay. and both and also they get shot multiple times, and green blood spurts out. So, well, it's actually yellow, sir. Should check your alien lore. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Whose mother here again? Um, whatever. Apparently, I, this I, thing was going to be called the Beluga alien originally. Yeah, so that was like when there was a different plot for whatever Prometheus 2. <laughs> oh, Paradise, yeah. Well, not even Paradise. I think it was actually like there was a different story at one point, like completely different, and it involved like engineers like transforming into these things. Oh, okay. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the design. I, I like I really, its human. It's done better than the, the, new, the newborn still. Yeah, I would... So, I, I like this thing much better than newborn. I would be happy with it being in, in a tier. That's that's my vote. Um, Baker, what because it does not have red blood, what <laughs> what was your thought? It's still A. It's still A. Oh, I just thought that that made it more of a human connection. It's like, wow, it bleeds red blood like that. I think I don't think it's it would make it makes, better. I don't think make it what, an A plus. Yeah, but I don't think what makes it I don't think it's its connection to humanity is why it's good. I think it's because it's weird and alien is why it's good. Sure, and like cave. I think it's the combination of the two that does it for me. Yeah, I like that it's closer to us than the Xenomorph. Yeah. I like that plot point. But it's at the same time, it's not the only thing. It's still weird and alien. It's a freaky design. Yeah. It's way better than, in my opinion, way better than the runner or... Yeah, I I, I agree. If, If we put the neomorph in a you know even just kind of looking at what we have laid out here i'd be happy putting the newborn in d or f (laughs) because i do the only and i'm saying that because i like the neomorph so much more than the newborn as much as i might defend the newborn in resurrection i like this thing more and it tackles the same similar concept at least and i think does it way better sure even with yellow blood sure all right so i stand by my a all right. I'm glad you guys well, agree. then we are in agreement. Let's bump this way up to F, too. All right. Well, he moved up a tier. Um, <laughs> moved up to F, yeah. Yeah. That's almost like popular opinion, really, because <laughs> it's like we're going to lose subscribers over putting the newborn in anything higher than F. <laughs> yeah. I feel um, like, yeah. Okay. But whatever. Uh, let's do the deacon. All right. Um, so the deacon is interesting because um, is he after the credits? No, he's or, before the credits. Right, right, right before, before the credits, though. Yeah. Right. So the yeah. the yeah the deacon is interesting because people who didn't go into Prometheus realizing it was an alien movie were surprised. Oh, it's yeah. an alien movie, and then people who were going in expecting an alien movie were like, "That's it." Right. <laughs> um, it 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 really. The thing that I'm disappointed most with with this thing is um, it doesn't play a role in the story. Yeah, this uh, one's hard to rank because it's like one shot at the end. It, yeah, it, it just... I think the, the design is really cool and freaky. Yeah, and it's, you know, got the goblin shark thing going. I like, you know, yeah. the inner jaw. It's obviously designed to evoke similarities with the classic xenomorph without, you know, being a xenomorph. Yeah, it's like um, less evolved Xenomorph. Yeah, I think it did the job that it was intended to do. I remember I didn't 
I didn't know that Prometheus was an alien movie uh, the first time yeah. I saw it. Me neither. But when I saw that at the end, it made me go, holy shit, this is an yeah. alien movie? Yeah, yeah. Same you experience. Know? Yeah, I yeah. don't I don't have the um, you know, the privilege of that perspective. I was pretty in on the development of Prometheus. I was following it all the time, but I can sure. definitely understand and appreciate that because you know that's a sentiment of a lot of people that you know realizing for the first time that whoa i just watched an alien film and Mm -hmm. i and i didn't know it um and you know that's that's pretty cool um i just kind of wish so in in earlier versions of prometheus this thing was actually called the ultramorph um and and it kept on having less and less of a role in the story at one point there was like a whole thing with it chasing elizabeth around the crash ship and then later it, it they kind of just reduced it to watching elizabeth and david leave the planetoid um and then they just kind of reduced it really to this uh little tag before the credits mm-hmm. um, yeah. i feel what you're saying it's missed potential i think because again, the design's really cool and it never shows up again, right? Yeah. But, um, and yeah, it's in it's in not the movie. I'm yeah, sure in, there's in, comic in stuff. Oh, the, so the comics, this thing has an interesting um uh fate. Right. It turns in it turns into a mountain, which I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. oh, oh, oh okay. Well, uh, all right. Uh, and I'm like, I don't get the logic there, but I guess it makes as much sense as black goo turning into a squid um uh, a little less sense than that i think oh well, yeah I'm, <laughs> but, yeah i'm not i'm not entirely sure you know what the thinking is i didn't read those comics and of course uh, sure. they're not really considered canon um i i like this one's hard though because it's so, so brief in the movie what i will say is this um when we see the deacon it, it definitely like that that scene definitely does create like a little bit of a, a world like 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 you guys were saying this was the first time you guys realized prometheus was an alien movie um in and that I, sense it is pretty iconic i guess it it, it is it changes and, the whole perspective of the movie it, 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 yeah that's kind of i guess that's kind of what i'm getting at here is that it it kind of if prometheus is to be viewed as a, a think piece and supposed to ask these big questions um you know i think it's kind of interesting to have something that makes you question the movie again even if we're just reducing it you know from you know why does god hate us to wait a minute is this a, an alien movie um <laughs> right um i i think it's it's a big moment even in its brevity mm-hmm. and, and even if it doesn't really end up having much of an impact on anything um yeah it's still it's a powerful moment it's really freaky i mean it's one of my favorite designs of any of these it, it is so, I, I i it's definitely it's we're seeing like the beginnings of like a xenomorph obviously with the elongated head and then the two sets of jaws um there's something about that inner jaw being like sinewy and the upper yeah. teeth being like flat it just yeah. has this whole different yeah, Ridley Five. Scott uh, has a, a fetish for goblin sharks because he also right, did, sure. he did that for the Neomorph as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, goblin shark is a sufficiently a weird looking animal, so I totally I totally respect that choice. Um, but and it, it really fittingly feels like a, a a younger xenomorph in the sense a less refined xenomorph. Well, it also depends on how you look at Prometheus because uh, the engineers made a. Uh, like a, an altar or sorts to this thing. Um, oh, right. It, yeah, the, the, like I I'm, I'm was presuming the thing that we see, the, the like, what is it? The image or the carving in the wall that we see is supposed to be depicting this. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the consensus. Yeah. <clears throat> that said, it is kind of convoluted to get to this point where it's like mm-hmm. a human has to get impregnated by well, another I, with the black goo and then they have a squid baby and then that fucks the engineer and then this comes out yeah yeah but i i think in some ways that was the original point because it's like showing that the alien was an accidental byproduct in some ways like like that's what i was saying like with the hammerpede the hammerpede 
doesn't like specifically like lay eggs in anything. It doesn't really reproduce. It's just kind of, you know, uh, you know, a biological weapon in, in some ways that like, gets created by the black goo. Uh, but then the, the squid thing was like an accident. And now we have something that can create more life. And I thought, oh, that's the point of Prometheus is that there's a little bit of humanity in this, uh, this creature. Um, and then Covenant, of course, goes in a completely different direction and makes Prometheus like, wait, wait, you throw your hands up like, wait, what is this? You know? Right, yeah. Um, I'm thinking C tier for this, right next to the octopus. The trilobite? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I wanted a little higher, but I can't justify <laughs> it's in one shot. Like, I, I, I yeah. think C tier is very appropriate for it, but it's not but it's kind of like the trilobite here. It's not because the trilobite is bad. It's because the creatures that are above it just are, you know, there's more. They're so than... good. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on the rank of some of these. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And I think that makes sense. Um, well, the two most important ones are left. The uh, cred alien. Okay. So, <laughs> so... Justin has not seen either AVP movie. <laughs> you like this one? <laughs> this this it looks thing, goofy. This thing is dog shit. <laughs> um, I hate this design so much. Um, <laughs> like I understand wanting to incorporate like the predator dreadlocks and everything, but it's like, why didn't the alien? If you're gonna do that, it's like, why don't the aliens have like the hair? hair? Or so, yeah, it's just like it's so dumb. Well, I think it's those like, are like tendrils for like sensory purposes right but it's not but it's it <laughs> but it's not like make... he uses them for that he just swings yeah. them around like their hair well, well you know don't misgender it's, it is a she um uh, sure well yeah because it's a yeah. queen it's not just a pred alien it is a queen pred alien right so we haven't well, seen a normal pred alien at any of these movies <laughs> true yeah um yeah, they, went, they really blew their load on this one no i hate the i i I hate the design of this thing so much. Um, it, I, I, there's a, I've seen many pred alien designs that are better than this. Um, it, That's a good point. I, I think my favorite one was probably from the AVP game in 2010 that like felt the most natural. Like, okay, that actually kind of does feel like a xenomorph that came out of a predator. Um, but um, let, let's, let's. I mean, talk. you also can't see it at all in the movie because it's so dark. Well, you can't, yeah, you can't see anything. I don't know if the shot's even from the movie. It might be. No, but this, I, I think, is a, this is a promotional image, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it, it's like, I showed Justin one time the sewer battle from AVP, and he, I think he, like, he said, I have literally no idea what the fuck's going on. Because uh, <laughs> it, it's just like you're looking at a black screen. And, he, and then he bursts out, or she bursts out of the sewer at the end. Yeah, it's it, well, it, the road. yes, yes. Here's so, the one from the game you're talking about. This looks pretty cool, actually, how the treads are coming out of the alien skull. Yeah, uh, that's not quite how I remember it. I still, I, I, I think the dreads are controversial. I think you have to, it's hard it's to better implement it than this one. But. It's better implemented. I, yeah. I think that's a good way of putting gonna, it. If you're going to do it, um, this just looks like he's wearing like it, half his head is just a predator's head. Yeah, I, I know, but it's like, yeah, it's I just I don't like the design of it. It feels like really lazy to me. Um, but uh, let's talk about this thing's role in the story. Um, so this thing is uh, the impetus for the plot happening. So at the end of the very first AVP, they brought the 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 one predator back to the ship, and then they leave him alone, and then this thing bursts out of him, um, and uh, somehow forgot that. Uh, it, somehow that that predator forgot that he was impregnated by a facehugger. Or... Yeah, and no one out, none of the other predators like think that's a possibility. <laughs> they just put yeah. him in a room somewhere, like. Yeah, and then they just leave him, and then this thing comes out. Um, yeah. and they're like, "Oh shit!" And then he fucks everything up. Yeah, yeah, and then it like at the beginning of AVP uh, two, uh, uh, AVP Requiem, um, this the adult version of this uh, just you know attacks all the predators on the ship. And, there's a baby. Yeah, there's the baby. It's got the little, it's got yeah, the little and, mandibles. And, and that was a fun little, like, just Easter egg tag, uh, kind of. At for the, the end, end of 
at the end of AVP. Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, I found that kind of you know, that was fun. You know, it wasn't yeah. like the Deacon. The Deacon kind of brought up some more questions, but that was like, okay, right. everyone's going to expect to see a pred alien at some point you know, in this yeah. movie. So I was like, okay. Um, but uh, this, uh, but then we get to the one, the adult version. And uh, like I said earlier, not only is this a, a pred alien, this is a pred alien queen. And right. It impregnates it, a bunch of already pregnant ladies with eggs. And somehow, yeah, it, it with, somehow uh, turns their babies into xenomorphs. Like, chest, chest bursters. Yeah, well, so, I think they well, just ate the babies that were in there. So yeah, but, but then it also is like the way it's impregnating them is just, it's like mouth fucking them. And it's like, I'm yeah, pretty right, sure that's yeah. not how pregnancy works. You can't. The, it's really edgy, though. You can't, you can't, yeah, the, the thing about AVP Requiem is the whole thing just feels incredibly juvenile. Like, well, well the, I'll say, the, I, I agree with you on that, but the face huggers impregnate through the mouth as well. Well, yeah, but they're but not. It's, but it's not connected to the womb. It's coming out of the chest. But you was know? it? Don't you think they just kind of like tunneled through the women's bodies to eat the babies and then burst I, out? I mean, sure, it's possible, but that wasn't the impression that I was getting. The impress because they, because, because they were they're pregnant. because yeah. they're already pregnant. The implication right. that these became their babies, and it's like, wait a minute, the mouth isn't connected to the womb. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Um, right. it, this trigger movie, warning, by the way. I don't know what this would trigger. I, I, it's I, very uh, upsetting. <laughs> it, well, it's just really juvenile. The whole AVP Requiem feels like a 15 year old, edgy schoolboy. Yeah, it. some frat dudes. Yeah, it, not even frat dudes. I'm talking about like, you know, some 13 year old kid in high school. It's like, hey, hey, and then the alien mouth fucks him. And then the, and then the, and then the, uh, and he gets laid. The pizza delivery guy gets laid. The pizza, de pizza delivery guy gets, a, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, technically every alien is fucking mouth fucked. And then, you know, an alien comes right. out of you. But I, somehow it feels really lame uh, in AVP Requiem. And like really edgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well yeah it's unnecessary it's just it's like trying to you know in a very very superficial way appeal to like um horror movie like, like uh, conventions that we see in like you know uh, some crappy like pg-13 rated horror movie you know for sure yeah I yeah know. um i i uh, the, here's some well, things so i do find i uh, uh, no, I'll, I'll let you say something. Yeah. I do have something else to say, but the only thing is just like we don't even see if this one can beat the predator because the fight gets cut short at the end, so well, it doesn't even really deliver on the versus no, idea. Yeah, I mean at least I mean yeah, at least in AVP one we got you know an alien that kills two predators. I, the problem with that is I don't buy it, but at least we sure. kind of get a sense of okay, there's a winner. I they guess fight the queen and you know yeah, and then the queen kills him. Uh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like definitely paul ws anderson is an alien oh, fan. right yeah. um but but the thing with um the thing and then of course uh, what you said baker um yeah, we don't even get a conclusion to the fight in this um but yeah. one thing i will say i think is interesting about it is um it is kind of teased in the movie that the pred alien here um almost is taking on certain qualities of the predator not just superficially but like yeah it uh, behaves more like the predator it's more hunting things and then it also like the i i think the fight scene at the end between them is interesting where the it kind of pauses for a moment to let the predator take off its armor which in normally oh, yeah. you know that feels really <laughs> kind of lame and stupid but it almost like insinuates that this creature is like taking on some kind of uh, a little bit of the honor aspect of the predator and it's like i'm gonna you know fight a this worthy thing. opponent a yeah. worthy opponent yeah and i'm like that's an interesting thing that the movie doesn't really explore in any satisfying way it's just an idea that i like huh okay yeah, i wish they did more with that yeah it feels too much like a predator for me in a lot of scenes it's just literally walking around and yeah it doesn't behave the same way so i'm i'm content with putting it in f tier <laughs> yep uh, that's what i'm thinking as well yeah 
Justin, do you have any? I'll be pr- every- <laughs> um, yeah, I'm fine with F tier. I don't know. I, I, I could put it in uh, S tier, but only for ironic reasons. Yeah, and that wasn't part get, of the criteria. Yeah, get, yeah, get your screen cap. Yeah, we're really wetting <laughs> Justin's appetite to watch these AVP movies. <laughs> yeah, those would be good commentaries. All right, last one. But if, it's, the best uh, one for last the, the, is the Black Goo, baby. All right, the Black Goo. Now, um, uh, or, you know, so this is an interesting one. Um, it kind of just acts as sort of monster juice in Prometheus. Um, yep. so, it, at the, so at the beginning of the movie, Engineer drinks this stuff and it breaks down his whole body at a genetic level, uh, which allows for uh, the DNA to kind of recombine in the beginnings of like life on that planet. Um, later on, we see that if it comes into contact uh, with organic life, it mutates it, such as what happened with the hammerpede. And then if it's ingested in small enough quantities that the you know person who ingests it isn't going to disintegrate and they happen to have sex with somebody and impregnate <laughs> them, it can produce a squid baby. Um, mm-hmm. And then as we're seeing here in this scene, it's uh, the drop that's on David's finger. Um, it does not react to something that isn't organic, um, which I think is an interesting component. I think one of the more interesting things in Alien Covenant, honestly, it's like, it it kind of shows that with, um, with David, you know, with AI in general, we created something that can be a wrench in the machine of life, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's, you know, that's an interesting idea to me that, you know, get a deranged AI working with this stuff and they create a a horrible monster. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Uh, black goo has a lot of potential, you know, and we only see, you know, a fraction of it. Yeah. And that's another thing too in Alien Covenant. We see it like dropped and then it just sort of explodes and turns into like a a locust swarm almost. So um, I, I think potential is a really great, description justin because it feels like prometheus didn't really necessarily fully flesh out what the stuff is it kind of just threw everything at the wall and maybe we get more of a detail on it in the sequel which we didn't really get that yeah you're left more confused about what it does and why and what is it i think on the most basic level it's um we, we are supposed to understand it as both of uh, an engine of creation and destruction. So it can create right. life uh, and it can also destroy it. And that's what the opening of Prometheus really kind of establishes, at least mm-hmm. visually. Um, so just kind of taking it on that, um, on those terms, I think it's very interesting as a plot device, um, but I don't think it really... I don't, I don't know how it stands on its own. It's more, it, it's more of something that other writers can come in and do something with. And, you mm-hmm. know, what it, we need to make a, a monster, we need to do something. It, it's, it's kind of just left open. And that's what's interesting about it. And also what's very frustrating about it. Yeah, it feels like a writing tool. It doesn't feel superly, super uh, organically in the story yeah i mean it it makes sense for what it is and what it does but at the same time it's like you didn't need to like set the rules up like this necessarily you could have kind of just left it open anyway without including it yeah uh i Um, it's interesting if you look at the development of prometheus when it was originally a more straightforward prequel um they had to when they decided to make the leap to say well this isn't going to really be a you know a you know standard alien movie anymore um mm-hmm. they had to take something that which was originally like the alien eggs the ovomorphs and turn it into something else and sure. this is kind of the amorphous undefined black goo uh is kind of what came out of that that uh, was um damien lindelof when he was hired to rewrite it yeah, it feels a little like amorphous and like hard to. It's not like iconic in the sense it's, of you. It's hard to picture when someone says. Yeah, Damien, speaking of Damien Lindelof, I mean, 
correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't like watch Lost, but he was like one of the writers on Lost, right? So, that sounds I, familiar. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it's kind of like it's it's the J.J. Abrams mystery yeah. box kind of yeah. writing. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it's it's just like, what is writing. it? Oh, it you know it does this sometimes and it does that sometimes. You right. Know, it doesn't feel like there's going to be a big twist to reveal right. something. Yeah. It's supposed like. to generate some kind of mystery in you, and then it doesn't really do that it just is like whatever the plot needs at that moment basically mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah yeah um that said beyond the movies um a lot of there's been some interesting stuff uh, other writers have contributed uh and have done some interesting things with the black goo and as i've mentioned numerous times on this like alex white you know uh kind of kind of put the black go into a more of a context of a, being what the face huggers are actually injecting into their hosts and essentially sure. making the black goo a baby xenomorph um which right that's outside the cinematic universe though, it's outside it? the, that's why i didn't bring it up until now i'm saying sure. that I, i'm kind of bringing that more as like a, a potential for what it could become um mm -hmm. And I and I do think that idea that it is like the embryo in in some ways kind of makes a lot of sense of things in the prequels that don't really make a whole lot of sense. Right, it helps you uh, wrap your head around the concepts. As it stands, though, since we're judging this just in the movies, um, what what are, what are you guys' uh, thoughts on it? I'm low, I'm low -ish rank for me, I think. I'm kind of leaning either i'm i'm kind of mid I, i'm honestly kind of split on it um mm -hmm. i'm really really split on it because i i think in terms like yeah in terms of the themes of the story i think the black goo is very interesting in terms of the story i think it's really not that interesting um, i think what it generates is more interesting which is the deacon and the trilobite yeah which are C, so that makes it fall into D for me. I think D is fair. It's kind of just a, a plot point writing mechanic. As it stands on its own, it's not super interesting. I mean, some of the themes are kind of cool in the concepts, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's not explored really. It's it's not, the design of it is just black goo, you know, like it's very, yeah be anything you know yeah yeah it's it, the problem like is the, we just, the, the smoke problem, monster from lost actually yeah, yeah i mean that's the problem with it we don't know enough about it and it's kind of evident that the writers probably didn't either and i right that's, and that's why i think d is fair <laughs> all right um ended on a on on an interesting note there now here's here's kind of one last thing um looking at this list like how do we how do we feel about this? Is there anything that we would change? Is there anything that we would, you know, how how does this feel? Is this peer reviewed? It feels right to me. Yeah, it, um, it, I yeah. I I think the only this, thing is the cloned alien. I feel bad because we put the other alien for. But which one is uh, the cloned alien? <clears throat> she's in. We don't remember because Justin hasn't seen it. Um, no, I you guys can place I, that I, somewhere. No, no, no. I actually think that's perfect. Yeah, okay. I, 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 mean, to be fair, I, I don't remember either. Like, I forgot not, about her. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like I need know, a thumbnail for her for the tier list. So it, it, it's really just, um, you know, it's just kind of there for a scene and it gives birth to the new yeah. one. Uh, yeah. I don't really, I, I, I think it's interesting, but you know, whatever. It's even I, the I, same prop. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think this, uh, this looks pretty good. Um, if like you're watching it. this and uh, uh let us know in the comments if you agree with our list or not and uh yeah um i had a fun time uh putting this together though for sure yeah it was good yeah. use the youtube respond feature to answer with your own tier list video yeah. That's actually you be you by your hammer p get you young and tier b you be yeah um <laughs> Yeah, if you listen to the director's commentary. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, that was our show this week. This was fun, and uh, we'll be back well, next well, week. Well. Yeah, talking about more news and... Uh, more uh, aliens. Yeah, we're we're back on aliens. <laughs> we're doing will. it. Yeah, we're doing, <laughs> doing the aliens. We'll have another topic, and uh, 
we'll see what that is. It'll be a surprise. All right. Um, that's the show. Thank you all for watching. This is uh, Matt, Justin, and Baker, Last Survivors of the Studio Utani podcast. Help Signing us. Off. Signing off. <laughs> Bye.